dan aduh Rasulullah la ilaha illallah wadahu la syarika lahu wallahu hamd wallahu mu wa yuhi wa yunad wa huwa ali kulli shay'in qadir it is with the name of Allah the merciful redeemer the merciful benefactor that we openly bear witness that none is worthy of worship or devotion but Almighty Allah. We openly bear witness before the world that Muhammad ibn Abdullah وسلم, is the seal of the Prophet. La ilaha illallah. There is no deity, no God but Almighty Allah. His is the dominion. He has soul power. It is Allah who gives both life and death. We thank Almighty Allah for this day of life, this day of Jummah. We pray and ask Almighty Allah that He not let our hearts deviate after He has guided us aright. We ask Almighty Allah, He who is the sole creator, the bestower of all bounties. We ask him to protect us and let our entry be by the gate of truth and honor and our exit by the gate of truth and honor. This wonderful day, this wonderful time that we live in, certainly we know of the pandemic, that we know also of the pandemic of ignorance. Those who encamp their lives in the betrayal of their own origin themselves. Almighty Allah has bestowed upon us the book. It says of the Quran, the book that is to be read, the book that is to be recited, the book that is to be taught, the book that is to be shared. This is the book. In it is guidance, sure, without doubt. Almighty Allah has said to us, those who are believers, those who put their total faith, their trust in Him, there is guidance, sure, without doubt, sure, without doubt. So here we are today. Some uh, the scholars say, with the most important day on the Islamic calendar, the day that man was created, this day of Juma. We welcome those of you who are viewing us on Facebook, YouTube, and our page, Masjid al Taqwa here in Shreveport, Louisiana. Muslim brothers and sisters from abroad, from various countries who tune in for our Juma prayer service. We welcome you and we pray and ask Almighty Allah to bestow his blessings upon you and your families and those who have lost family members due to this pandemic. But I begin by mentioning this wonderful day and this wonderful time. We are seeing the workings of Almighty Allah we are seeing how Almighty Allah is bringing His kingdom into being more so, more so. Many see this as doomsday, this pandemic. But what about the loss of lives due to ignorance? What about the loss of lives by following the shaitan? Our topic today is engaging the creation engaging the creation. And those of you who follow us on Facebook, as you know, I wasn't here last Friday, but we were in attendance for the Talim services, which take place here in Shreveport every Sunday from 12.30 until. And we like to think that more so our Talim services and our Juma prayer services 
are done in conjunction, in an order. This engaging the creation. Look at what has transpired in the world today, dear beloved believers. And when I say the world today, what has happened because of the teaching of this book, El Quran? What has happened because of the presence of Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa This man, who was the epitome of all of the prophets, this man who taught the Quran, and this man who was taught by the angel Jibreel by permission of Almighty Allah. We say, Subhanahu wa ta'ali, Allah the Most High. We have been instructed as Muslims that our priority is that of a devotee. If we are to be slaves, we are only to be the slaves of Almighty Allah. Again, Allahu la ilaha illa Allah. This wonderful ayat from Surah Al Qudsi, or the Surah 2, Surah Al Baqarah, Surah Qudsi 255. Allah, there is no God but He, the living, the self, subsisting. Allah, la ilaha illaha, who al hayyul hayyum, the self subsisting, the eternal, la taakuduhu. No slumber seizes him. No slumber, no sleep overtakes him. His are all things in the heavens and the earth. Who is there can intercede in his presence except as he permitteth? He knoweth what appeareth to the creatures as before or after or behind them nor shall they come out of his knowledge, except as he willeth. His throne does extend over the heavens and the earth, and he feeleth no fatigue in guarding and preserving them, for he is the most high, the supreme in glory. Now, why did we begin with this reading of the Surah to the Qudsi? Many of you who have tuned in, many Christian devotees who tune in to our page and to Islamic Perspective, a call to freedom. We have studied the Bible. We have come from that environment of what has been taught in reference to all of the prophets and what has been said of Esau ibn Miriam, Jesus, the son of Mary. Jesus, the son of Mary. Jesus, the son of Mary. Now, I mentioned this three times. Why? Because it must be understood that Almighty Allah has no sons. He has no daughters. This is a declaration that we make as Muslims. But you must understand that Almighty God has said to us that if he desires a son, he will take a son from that which he has already created. Why does God need a son? God has been placed in a low picture by mankind. This man that has placed God subservient to another man, subservient to a time, subservient to sleep, subservient to slumber, to slumber. This man serves the shaitan. Understand that there are only two powers in existence. One power is the soul power that Almighty Allah controls and has. The other power is the power of Shaitan, but the power of Shaitan, it is an artificial power. It is not real. When we begin to study the Quran, Allah tells us, listen, first of all, we want you to know that there's no compulsion. But there will come a time where you will have to stand accountable for what your hands have wrought. So here we are today engaging the creation. Here we are today engaging the creation. What creation? Allah has instructed us that this entire universe 
the heavens and the earth, the material world and the spiritual world. We are to engage the material world, the universe, with our minds. Allah has given us information again in the universe, in the heavens, in the sky, and also in the material world. And the Quran instructs us, as those of you who study the Bible, it says that God's throne, it is over the waters. His throne is over, his dominion, it is over again, the heavens and the earth. Now how are we to see this creation that we are to engage? In all of the creation, God has said to us, Allah, he has said to us, in all of creation, all of creation, there are signs for us. But not only are there signs outside of our bodies, there are signs within us. Engaging the atoms, the ATOMs, when we look at the scientists, and engaging the Adam, our father, our first father. Those of you who are Christians, you are taught in your Bible that Jesus Christ represents the second Adam. You haven't given a language that is mystical. You haven't given a language that is symbolic. You haven't given a language that pulls you away from the reality of what Almighty Allah has created within you. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, this man came from a tribe known as the Quraysh. And this tribe more so believed in the excellence of nature. The term that is used in the Quran is Hanifa. Hanafa, Hanifa. It is addressing our original nature, our original posture, how we were created, and what we were given inside, our natural origin. So we are to engage this dust. Some scholars say that man was created from dust. As we read the Quran, the Quran mentions dust. The Quran mentions water. The Quran mentions mud. And some would say black, stinky mud. This dust, this language that you read up in scripture, the more that you look at the words of Quran, that's why we suggest to you who are Muslims, English speaking Muslims, converts to this religion of Al Islam, we suggest that you study the Quranic Arabic. Why? Because some things that you read in the translation, though the translations are wonderful, the scholars have done a wonderful work, but the more you are able to read Quran and to see and to take Quranic dictionaries and understand the meanings of the words of Quran, the higher elevation your understanding, your spirit will move. But more so, if you want to understand Quran, we are instructed that the best teacher of Quran is Imam Quran itself. For you to study the Quran diligently. If you have a question about the Quran, ask the Quran, read the Quran. The Muslims are those who suddenly, we are those of Iman, we are those of faith, but we are those that are trying to understand our origin, why we are here, where we came from, what is our purpose, what are our duties. We have not been given, as I often say, this religion of Al-Islam, this Quran, this Kitab. We have not been given this book, this knowledge, this wisdom of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and all of the prophets that we sit on it. We have those among us today from the Tajik Jumat. And on occasions, different brothers come through Shreveport on a journey, on a journey, trying to please Allah, teaching this religion, sharing with others their experiences. We have people from various countries going throughout the world, seeking to share this knowledge. You had Muslims over 1,400 years ago who journeyed into various towns and villages who lost their lives. We have people in this country today, right here in America, who lost lives, who lost families in spreading and teaching this religion, engaging the community, engaging dust. What am I saying, engaging this dust? And what's so significant about dust? 
What is significant about each word from Quran? Not just the entire ayat, not just an entire surah, not just an entire chapter, as you would say, not just an entire verse, but ayat. It has much more of a significant meaning in terms of the words and the signs of Almighty God. So here it is, this dust. Dust is looked upon as being a little particle. Basically, it's the saying, it has no value. It's just dust. It can be blown away by the wind, by the slightest little wind gust. You can sneeze and dust, it begins to spread. Well, let's look at this dust as being metaphorically speaking as to the value or no value that man might have. As a saying, there are some in the nostrils of the greedy, in the nostrils of those who are rich with material good, but do not believe in God, then look at those who are not on the same level as they are in terms of their material possessions. They look at the masses as being dust, not being or having any significant role, any significant worth. But here is Almighty Allah revealed this religion among the poor there in Mecca where people where those who were idol worshippers they were hypocrites they scolded they took advantage of women they saw women basically on as a sexual object so they had all of these various gods they worshipped various images the male private parts, the female private parts, anything that you could think of, they worship it. And so here it is, Almighty Allah sent among them one just like them, one from their own tribe, from their own area, their own environment. They would have no excuse. They couldn't come and say, well, you know, if there is a God, then why didn't you send us one? Why didn't you send us? A deliverer. Why didn't you send us a messenger? Why didn't you send us a teacher? So here was Muhammad. Peace and blessings be upon him. Who came with an humble spirit. Who came not being one to be a liar. But being one who stood upon common sense. The common reality. Who stood upon his nature. Who responded to the environment. One who just wanted to do good but had principles. He was a searcher. He was a seeker. He was a thinker. Thinker. He was one not only to admonish, but one to think. He was one to compare. He was one to take time out to think. So here was one that was actually a reflection of his father. His father, Ibrahim. And here it is, Ibrahim was known as the father of the faith, the second father, Adam being the first, and Prophet Ibrahim being the second. Now what is this tie in, this engaging of creation? This engaging the atoms. Muslims are actually, when you begin to study the Quran and you study yourself, you are actually a scientist. And I coined this a long time ago and saying, you are a scientist in the laboratory of your own mind your own spirit, your own heart. And look how God gives us the ability to look at microscopic animals, giving man the opportunity to study your book that would bring him in to the best of understanding. Look at this book that is over 1,400 years ago that was speaking about a sperm and an egg. And it wasn't until later when you begin to look at the history of the Europeans, it wasn't until later when they became a part of a group who went among the Muslims, who went there in Spain, Cordoba, Spain, and other parts of Spain where Muslims ruled, some say from five to 700 years, teaching science, not just giving spiritual teachings, but teaching the sciences. And so thus Europe had what is known as a renaissance. An awakening. Now here it is, this particular ayat that I read, Surah to Al-Qudsi. It began by speaking of Allah neither slumbering, neither sleeping. 
When you do not have knowledge, when you do not have wisdom, when you do not have the insight into self, you are like the walking dead. You are asleep. When you do not have a grasp of where you are going and how you are going to get there, when you do not have a relationship with the very one that has created you for the first time, and the one that I am mentioning, he says that we will die, but he will resurrect us. When you do not have a relationship with Almighty God Allah, when you do not accept this one that has created you from a dust particle, from nothing to something, in other words, as the saying in this country, America has been dead. But when this book came to the shores of America, when the ideology, the philosophy of El Islam hit these shores, when this religion was taught here in America, slowly, as Allah says, that we are taught gradually. We don't wake up knowing or having all of the understanding as Muslims of the Quran. Though we may be born in an Islamic family, in an Islamic so-called state, and I'm very sincere about that when I say so-called Muslim countries, because there are very, 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 very few Islamic countries on the earth today. Yet there are good Muslims in these countries where you find Muslims. But when you begin to look at the leadership, when you begin to look at those who say that they are leaders following Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you see very, very few leaders taking a stand. The Muslims are those who stand qiyam. We stand tall. We stand proud. We stand with our good senses. We stand being rational. We stand being logical as our father, Ibrahim. But look at Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He epitomizes all of the prophets that ever existed. But of this man, and he said even of himself, the word, Mithlakum, I am just like you. Letting us know, God is letting us know when we study his life. And as his, as his wife, Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her. She said, if you wanted to know Muhammad, then read the Quran. Study the Quran. The Quran is a reminder of who we actually are. The Quran teaches us how we are to live on this earth. If there is hope for America, it is hope in this book. If we understand the term Ummah, if we understand the term community life, if we accept and understand the teachings about the um, about the mother, then you understand that as those who follow Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you understand that you are following, yes, a man, but you are following a body of knowledge. You are following an example. You are following the example of a military leader, a father, a statesman. You are following the example of one who put his life on the line. Almighty Allah says of us, and we are to understand and to accept, that our life and our death, it is all for Allah. Our life and our death, it is all for Allah. But yet we are to ask for a long and prosperous life, and we are yet to live as though today is our last day on this earth. But live also, it says. Live also as if we will be here tomorrow as we're going to live forever. What are your contributions? What are our contributions as believers in preparing for this good bar? I was sitting and I was opening the Quran and I saw where Almighty Allah was directing us constantly. And it is said of the Muslims that we are to be those who are patient and persevering. We can have tons and tons of knowledge, tons of books, but in having all of these books, what of our actions? What of our deeds? What are you doing with the knowledge and wisdom that you have? Are you just, are you equitable among your sisters and brothers? Are you supportive of those who are in an area 
that you are not familiar with. When you go into a strange country, a strange land, and you're on a tour, then you have a tour guide. The Muslims are those who can assist those who have been traveling in the dark. We are to be guides for those that are coming out of the dark, that are seeking a way of life that is most beneficial to their souls. Almighty God says, all ye who believe, spend on your souls. Spend on your souls. So the Muslims are those who seek purification. When we read the Quran, we are to call upon Almighty Allah. We are to seek protection with Almighty Allah against the shaitan. And it says, this English translation by Yusuf Ali, it says, all ye who believe, fear Allah as he should be feared, and die not except in a state of Islam. Now, I read this ayah purposely because I said, if you begin to study the Quranic Arabic, you will see that in some translations, the word that Almighty Allah gave to the prophet, you will see that when you read the Quran, that you don't see these particular words in terms of how it is said in its translation. It does not say, die, except in a state of Islam. It says, illa wa antum muslimun. Now this is talking about something different. What is the Muslim own? The Muslims are who? The Muslims are those who surrender to Allah. If this is saying, they're not except in a state of Islam, then you have to understand, I want to go back where it says, Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu, all ye who believe. Now there are those who exist in the world with us, known as Jews, known as Christians. In the Quran, Allah teaches us, that they will be held accountable for what they say they believe in, their actions, their deeds. The Quran not only addresses Muslims, the Quran addresses who? Ya you had Ladina, oh you believe. This is not just a book for those who partake of El Islam. It is a warning, as you are to be a warner in the society, in the community. We say, we say again, my life and my death, it is all for Almighty Allah. So we might be killed, we might lose our families, our, all our material possessions in making the, direct, the declaration. We say we have taken this ahead of time. We say there is no God but Allah and that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he is Allah's messenger. Not Allah's prophet. Allah didn't have a prophet. What does Allah need? We need a prophet. We need prophets. We need to understand the message, the meaning. We need to understand the purpose of all of the prophets for all times. That they were coming, pointing the way to Muhammad. Pointing the way to the way. Muhammad was the way. And Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, he was one who brought light upon light. He was one who brought clarity. But you, who study the book known as the Bible, not the angels, in terms of what Esau even Miriam brought, you call it the Bible, but we know in terms of what the book, its meaning or its terminology, it was known as the gospel, the angel. Now, why am I bringing this up? Inshallah, we are trying to bring you closer and closer to this engaging of the creation. And when I say the creation, please, when you speak of a spiritual knowledge, when you speak of scripture, when you speak of religion, you are not to focus on the physicality, though that's important, but you are to focus on the spirit, the term the spirit of the leather. And some of you use the term, oh, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. This word, Holy Spirit, 
It's not talking about Allah, but it's talking about the spirit that Allah has created. Salamun ya hatta manna al fajr. Peace until the rise of morning. And then we are speaking of light in the This might of power. And it speaks about when the spirit comes down, when the spirit is descended. And it speaks about the stillness, the peace. So those of you who are in darkness, in terms of your mind, in terms of your spirit, you who are searchers, you who are seekers, study the life of the prophets. Read this Quran and you will see the development in yourself. You will see you being able to contribute to your family, to the society, to the world. We're going to see a better and a stronger America, not simply because of President Joe Biden that is coming into office. No matter who was in the office, as a believer, as a Muslim, you still had to surrender and do the works that Almighty Allah has prescribed for you. Whether you're Christian, whether you're Jewish, whoever, whatever your religion is, if you really understand, you're to be those who are to stand on principles. The Muslims, we have basically five principles. The first being that of faith. So what is your faith? Where is your faith? We are to be those who are strong against adversity. We are to be those who recall and remember and perform our prayers. But while we are doing our prayers, are we just praying to go through the rituals? Or are we praying in true surrender to Allah? And when I rise from the sajda, where I put my forehead on the ground, surrendering to Almighty Allah, remembering that now Allah has allowed me to rise up whole again. Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. When the angel Jibreel was teaching him, he was afraid after receiving this first message, this first revelation. And he went to his mate explaining what had happened. And here his mate was supportive of him, his wife. And in that she supported him, she carried him to one of our relatives. And upon meeting Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him, this man recognized the light that was in Muhammad. So when you have this light, there are those in the society, those in the community, they will recognize you. But don't look for the pats on the back from mankind. Be ready to stand if you have to stand on your own. Know you believe, fear Allah as he should be feared. So now we have the book. We are in America where our people are dying, not just from the pandemic, but from the darkness of ignorance. Not just the drug or physical drug, but again, the drug of not knowing, the drug of ignorance, the judge, the drug of not having insight into revelation, into scripture. So we are those who are proud. We are those who are having it Allah has chose us and allowed us to be Muslims. We ask for your support if you are a believer out there. We ask for your support, not just in terms of talking about money value, but in terms of acknowledging other believers who are striving to bring about light and understanding to all of mankind. You have been taught about a transfiguration. You have been taught about the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And we are saying to you that that is a scheme that the shaitan, that the devil has devised to pull you away from the reality of self. Jesus didn't teach in terms of him being or being in part or involved in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, it is said in their teachings that he carried his disciples up on the mountain and there they met Elijah and they met Moses and they came in contact with him, the three. But it was not meant to be a Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, but it was speaking about three stages of light. And so Jesus was pointing the way to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If you accept this book, if you accept this religion, then know that you have a responsibility to self, but most so to Allah. If you really want a good family life, if you really want 
a place in paradise. Not just the paradise that is to come after this life that you have now, but if you really want this life and the benefit in this life, then accept and understand that Almighty Allah has given you the fruit of the earth, has given you light upon light upon light, but you have to strive for it. Allah says you can have nothing, man, but what you strive for. That's all they come. Let there arise out of you a band of people and joining to all that is good and joining what is right and forbidding what is wrong. They are the ones that attain felicity. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sallallahu Surely Almighty Allah speaks the truth and again he has given us our brother our prophet muhammad peace and blessings be upon him we are in hopes inshallah with a few moments that we have left again in continuation as we will finish this discussion upon our tiling services engaging the creation allah has given us as muslims a kibla to turn to. And we often, in coming before you, mention the Hajj, one of the pillars of El Islam. And attending the Hajj, we seek to kiss the black stone. And this black stone, the scholars say, those of us who study the language of many scholars, but certainly those who are engaged in the studies of the work of Imam Wafidi Muhammad, may Almighty Allah be pleased with him and forgive him his faults and reward him the paradise. We've been told about the black stone as being a representative, or can be looked at as representing the dark heart of man. That this was once a meteorite falling from the heavens. Now it is this meteorite, or this object, falling from the heavens to the earth and this stone being placed on the corner of a building. And the Muslims, when we go around the Kaaba seven times, waving, kissing, seeking to kiss the black stone, this stone is representative of our nature, of our human heart, how so? We fall, all of us on different parts, no matter how good we are. You as Christians, as Jews, as Muslims, we all fall. We all sin at times. And look at the mercy of Almighty Allah. We say, Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim Look at these two mercies that we begin when we say, Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim Two mercies. And Allah says, He's all forgiving, most merciful. So now, here we are going and attending the Hajj, looking at this black stone. And I had the opportunity, I grabbed it and I hugged it and I kissed it. And I looked around because it's a struggle to get there. It's a wave of Muslims, of believers, going around in a circle, trying to get there. Sometimes you get so close, the wave will pull you back out into the water. The current is so strong among believers. And after we went around seven times, I was with two brothers, one from New York and the other from the Carolinas. And our objective, once we went around seven times, we said, we're going back. And our objective now is to kiss the stone. These brothers, the Lord blessed them to go up to the black stone. They got on both sides of the black stone. And they dropped down. And I heard a sound say, ooh. And when I look, I'm giving this story because this is a part of what is dear to me. They dropped down like I was a running back. And I'm telling you, a path just opened up and I walked right up to the black stone and I grabbed it and I hugged it and I kissed it. And I looked around, no one else could get through these brothers. After I kissed the black stone, they kissed the stone and all of a sudden, the sea, it began to twirl again. Now what am I saying and why is this so significant? Because 
once we fall, if we have faith, Allah will bring us up. He was bringing us up. He will bring us back from the dead, from the dead thoughts that we might have. So when you fall down, don't stop. Don't give up. Know that Allah is with us regardless. Engaging the creation. Engage your original nature. The excellence, the hanifa, the excellence of nature. Allah has created your nature most excellent. And your nature has to be studied. It has to be developed. The scientists that dealt with antibiotics. We know a pastor and others who came up with all these different studies of the germ. Penicillin and things of this nature. They had to study the creation of Almighty Allah. There's a fire, some say. Oh, this fire shut up in my bones. Scripture talks about the fire. In one instance, the fire is representative of a destructive mechanism that destroys as we see a piece of paper, as we see a house, a piece of wood, burn down to a crisp. And we have been given examples that in the hellfire, this fire would be so fierce that it would burn the flesh from the bones. And because the person was so wicked, the flesh would be allowed to come back and that person would burn again over and over and over. Not just to think about it in your mind because knowing what fire does to a piece of meat, why would you want to suffer like that? And when there's a fire, we mentioned a couple of weeks ago about the fires that were so prevalent in California, that with all of the modern technology, the scientists and the firefighters, they can put out these fires. They had chemicals going over the land, hundreds of thousands of acres, thousands of miles, the fire was running rapid. And gradually, when the wind ceased, then the fire went out. Now, I want you to think about the fire with wind. If you have air, if air hits the fire, it expands. But I want you to think about this fire also as being good. Don't you? In the winter, we have the heat on. The fire, it warms us. It warms our food. This same fire that can be used as a destructive mechanism, the same fire can bring us peace and harmony and warmth. The fire that is in the Muslims, in the believers. When the air, the spirit, when the air, the spirit, when the air of truth and understanding, with the words, the encouragement, the inspiration, the air, when that air is in the Muslims and we let out that air, when we explain ourselves, when we are true to the cause of Islam, when we are true in terms of how Allah wants us to be, this fire is in us, this inspiration that is in us. When we let it out, last week I mentioned the term as it's mentioned in the Quran, it speaks of the fecundating winds. The fecundating winds. It speaks of a wind that carries seeds to various locations, various environments. And when these seeds hit the earth, if the seeds are embedded in the earth, the seeds take on moisture, it takes on water. The seed, it is planted deep in the crust of the earth. And eventually as the water hits that seed, hits that ground, the seed begins to push up. It becomes a stem. It becomes strong, straight up. The Muslims who understand as I begin this good boy mentioning the dust. When we understand that if we take on the words of Allah every morning when we recite our prayers, when we study the Quran, if we take on these words from Quran, and we want to share what Allah has blessed us with in terms of understanding. When we speak from the thoracic clarity, when we speak from our bodies, when we understand that Allah has expanded our breasts, our knowledge, our understanding. When we speak to the world, when we declare, when we bear witness, you are bringing about life, you are putting the life words, the life forces in the environment. You have the power within you. We have the power within us. Why? Because we accept Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as our leader, as our teacher, as our guide. Don't you know if you teach this Quran, 
You are teaching what Prophet Muhammad taught? Don't you know the entire world has been waiting? The Christians say, oh, that kingdom come. You as Muslims, if you understand, the kingdom is already here. It's just that you can't see it because you are not surrendering. You don't have the faith that you are to have. Many look at the Friday prayer. Oh, yes, we know of the pandemic. But many look at it just as being a ritual. Let me go make my prayer. Let me give a little in the zakah. And I'm through for the week. That's it. No, as a Muslim, we have a duty. You should speak up in your family. You should have time in your family where you sit down with your wife and you sit down with your children and you teach this religion. You don't have to be dogmatic. Find ways to talk to your children. Spend time with your children. Spend time with your family. We don't need a Thanksgiving to remind us that we are to be thankful to Almighty Allah. We should be thankful every day. And I know the Native Americans, you think they're happy about a Thanksgiving? Because they know what happened in their lives. Or people came and took their land and their property, colonized them, killed them. Don't you know we feel the same way? Those who are descendants of slaves, but this religion has blessed us. No man can ever make me a slave again. Because I've accepted the law. I've accepted the prophet. I accept great and good brothers and sisters who are willing to die that mankind might receive this message. So I praise and I thank Almighty Allah that he has blessed us and that we have came from a drunken stage where we are sober-minded and we want to contribute in the best manner in which we can. Before we start, brother man, let me say something real quick. Brothers, uh, when you uh, make sure you have one space between each other or one in the front and one in the back, okay. you know, you know, like uh, like a zigzag. Right, right, right. And, and that way, we can always stay safe into the uh, with this COVID and everything going on. Allah Akbar. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Orahman Orahim Maliki Yomidin. Ya can Abudu, ya can Astaim. It didn't sort out on Mustakim. Sort out on
بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعود وإياك نستعين إتنا صراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم خير Alhamdulillah, 